Okay, back to it. Uh, so since the last video, I got no comments on what I should put for a design here, so I just kind of remade what I had in the old design. Uh, I, I've got nothing against how it looks. It's just uh, usually I try to avoid doing the same thing twice, but no, it's just an evolution of the old design, so I guess it's okay. So we've got a top, got a bottom. Bottom still needs some work. There's some things I actually want to do on the top as well. The side is uh, pretty much set because uh, we got the, the teeth and, or the fingers on the bottom and the top. We've got a design in it. We've got a way for the sides to be attached, uh, which will also hold the, the shade material behind. So pretty happy there. Um, so one thing I uh, ran into while I was looking at the original lamp is that uh, if you if you got on a table, you walk up to it, and you see the bulb a little bit too directly. This one will be it'll be less of an issue, but you know if you look at it this way, it's still going to be blinding. Um, I know a lot of lamps are just open on the top, and they're fine with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna design some parts so that that's not an issue, and maybe it'll make them, maybe it won't. Um, so I'm going to first start with this because uh, basically when I cut this piece, I'm going to have this, this circle that's just either waste or used to cut something else. But uh, instead of that, I'm just going to keep the circle and actually use it uh, to fill the hole. And so, But obviously, if I try to put it together like that, it's just going to fall through, hit the bulb, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so there's a couple ways to deal with that. First way is I could just make a larger circle around there, but it seems a little wasteful on material. Uh, so instead, I'm thinking, oh, make some rectangles. Basically, make these all the way around. Uh, basically, one at each corner, and it'll just be a small piece that comes through kind of locks into, into here. Maybe it's just a touch of glue to keep it in place. Although it, friction will be more, probably be more than enough just with friction. But it'll just be a little piece that slots in and then it goes over the edge. So well, I'm gonna, well, first I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, convert these so I've got them. And then I'm gonna hide this. And I might as well hide these as well. Just get them out of my way. All right, so I put uh, midpoint there and there, and a coincident and a coincident. And I'm going to go from midpoint here to midpoint there and make this perpendicular. And now I'm going to make this uh, equal to the material thickness. And let's see how constrained it is. Not very constrained yet. Okay, that's fair enough. So I'm going to put a, just put a point at the center of the circle. And make it coincident with this line. And that locks it down really good. Uh, I figure this cut... be just 10 millimeters will be more than enough and uh, don't actually need this or but I'm going to keep that uh, for the pattern I'll make these for construction and then I'm going to make a pattern out of this Not even sure I'll need that second arc. Yeah, don't need that at all. So, do an extrude cut. Through the wall. Have that. Alright. So now I've got something that I can uh, slot locking pieces into. So I'm going to sketch right on this surface here. And just draw a general design of what I want. Oh, 
about so roughly that shape could uh, obviously improve that a little bit with constraints. Try not to double up any of the constraints. All right. And where we have to do dimensions, we will. But if we can, just use what we've already got defined. more. I want this to just stick out a little bit. I mean, tiny bit. Uh, so I'm going to say just three millimeters, which is more than enough to hold it, but really don't want it sticking out more than that. It's absolutely necessary. And let's see. I want this We're going to want to fill it there and there as well. So I'll just draw in some extra lines. And then I can make what's already there construction lines. So that's parallel with that. And that's parallel with that. And these are going to be equal. And we've already got a variable we can use to define those. And I'm actually going to do the, use the same value for that as well. Uh, as far as how far these slide in, I think, uh, I think we'll just make it equal to the slot. And then we have to figure out how we want the top of this to look. It could be uh, could be kind of rounded, or yeah, every, everything's kind of hard edges. So I don't know if I want to do rounded. Maybe even want to be a triangle, but then it comes up to a point. I'm not sure I want point nine points at the very top of this. It, it might look nice. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to avoid that, though. Let's just go about halfway with these. So I'm going to just make these lines. These are perpendicular and for construction. And then this one's perpendicular to that. And we're fully defined. Just got a little, little piece that locks in there. Uh, Screwed up to here with, don't want to merge it. Okay. And uh, you know, I could use an axis, I think, rather than using that every time. Oh, caps lock. And let's hide that again. So now I can do a circular pattern, nine entities around that, of that, and hide 
hide this now. So if I hide this, show this. Okay, so now that drops in and keeps it from blinding you. Uh, and I think it looks really nice the way it is right here, but let's say it was rotated a little bit, so this was maybe pointing this way. Then it doesn't look so nice. Um, so what do we do to, to keep that from happening other than just being careful? Uh, well, we can put in just little index marks. So this is the first one. Gonna convert. Actually, I can just convert this face. That would be nice and easy. And I'll convert that as well, just to be thorough. And make this for construction. And then there's another one kind of buried under it. I also want that to be for construction. And I'm going to make a circular pattern of nine again. And again, I'm going to drag one out. So I can see the center point, so I can lock it down. And I'm just going to do an extrude cut of like one millimeter. So when I'm actually making this, this part will be, uh, instead of cut, it'll be engraved. So it'll be just, uh, just set down a little bit, and then these can just kind of drop in there. It won't even be a millimeter when I actually make it, but it'll be enough to, to grab these so that it's always in the right spot. And uh, saying that sometimes the when I engrave, it's just a little bit smaller, at least at the bottom of the engrave, it's gonna be a little bit smaller. It's just kind of how this how it works. So, um, shoot. Uh, so I'm gonna just gonna offset this by a tiny amount. Um, 0.075, that's 0.15 total. Uh, that's, yeah, that should be enough. Um, so then I'm going to edit this circular pattern and get rid of all these entities and select some new ones. I want this, 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 this. And one more over here. Okay. And it did not like, oh, because I'm doing the wrong one. Huh, whoops. Well, that will affect it. This is the, the original one. So go ahead and make this for construction real quick, just to be simple. Uh, Cut this down to four lines instead of six. So select this chain, make it for construction, offset it. Okay. Then I can go and edit the circular pattern, clear those selections, and I want that, 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 and that. And again, I gotta recenter it. Okay, so now it's a little bit bigger, so it might be off a a part of a degree, but it'll look just fine anyway, and it'll be a little bit easier to drop it into the slots. So that issue is solved, and we've got our sides. Uh, and they're all designed, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pattern those as well now. Oh. All right. So we got a, a nice little, little start here. Go ahead and save this real quick. And still need feet and still need the whole bulb holding arrangement but uh, the feet are kind of going to depend on the bulb holding arrangement and the bulb holding arrangement involves the socket which 
is supposed to arrive sometime today, but has not arrived yet and probably won't arrive for six or seven hours. Uh, so that'll have to wait. In the meantime, uh, let's get hide these so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so in the meantime, I uh, want to take care of the uh, the shading. Because uh, if as it is right now, you look at it, you're gonna just gonna have like a spot from the bulb burned into your vision for a little while, and that's not ideal. So, uh, if I total up these, let's just do a dimension between the two. So those are 60.5. And multiply that times 9, we have 544. And just for a rough number, it's under 300. So I can do, basically, I've got the ability to cut something that's big enough to wrap the whole way around. Uh, so I don't have to do it as individuals. I, I could, uh, but I don't have to. And I just got to decide what, what's easier to assemble, a bunch of separate pieces that are a little bit less, uh, less difficult to work with, or a single one. I'm thinking the separate pieces will probably be better. Uh, yeah. So let's hide this as well. Where was that first one again? All right, I've got first tooth, which will be on the first one. Okay. Come on, there we go. So draw it off the first one and just make a rectangle that covers the whole thing. And then we want to convert all these, which is kind of a, a pain if we do it one by one. But we can go back to the original sketch that created those and just convert the whole sketch. And then hide it again. So then uh, go to File Properties and... Uh, a new variable, which uh, I actually don't know the English thickness, but I don't know the uh, metric thickness on this one. So call it 0 And did I go the correct way? Yep. It's very tight, but it'll work. And uh, we're also going to want to pattern that. There. So we've got nine of them. And select body, select that, and OK. All right. So that looks good. All the parts up till here, just because this is starting to get a little bit confusing to look at. Um, so all the parts up to there are going to be crimson, which isn't red, but eh, yeah, it's not exactly crimson, but at least gives you the idea of what will be crimson. And these are all going to be white. Or, yeah, these are all going to be white. Or very close to white, anyway. Close enough. Okay, so that kind of gives us an idea. I, if we were to paint it pink, anyway, that's how it, pretty much how it looked. Except that all the, all these would be, you know, a different color because they're laser cut. But uh, okay. Save it as it is. And let's see. Need to 
then take care of the actual uh, the twine. I don't necessarily have to model this, but uh, it gives me a, at least if I do at least one of them, it gives me an idea of how much twine this is going to use, which I could measure it later, but still it's good to good to know, I guess. So this is going to involve a 3D sketch. But uh, I think just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to start with a couple of 2D sketches. So like that point, and I'm going to do a pattern of it of 25 of them and going in this direction. OK. And eccentric. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And 25. And need another set back here. Can't just convert sketch on this one because uh, it doesn't convert points when you do that. But it's a relatively easy sketch to make, so not a big deal. So I've got four sketches, and that'll do for starting point. So let's make a 3D sketch, and I'm going to start with a line from each of the end ones. And I'm going to make those normal, the surfaces they're coming out of. And make them equals. And these are just going to be for construction, so it doesn't really matter how long they are. So for construction now. All right. And then uh, the spline tool. So we're just going to go from point to point to point to point and hope that it's making something that looks halfway right. Otherwise, you might have to add more things to hang on to. And just have to hit, what, 100 points? That's no big deal, right? Actually, you know what? It is kind of annoying, though, because things are in my way. And it is hard to see what I'm doing. So I need something as a reference. I just don't want a whole bunch of stuff in my way, right? OK. What if I go from plane, go normal to that? So. I'm just trying to find a way that it's easier to work with. Yeah, I think I can work with that. So start there, there, there. Just need to kind of follow these through. You can get a little bit uh, twisty in, inside your brain when you're working in 3D sketches. Just kind of have to try to keep your wits about you. Yeah, 
not saying much because I'm just trying to focus on hitting the right points and not losing my place. And there's a lot of points to hit. I think there's like a hundred of them. 25 times 4 anyway. All right, and make this tangent to each of the ends. And here we go, and by, you know what, I already have lines there. I can just use those again. Actually, now it does matter how long they are. So let's say 10 millimeters. All right. So we got that 3D sketch designed. Just show everything again, make sure it kind of looks about right. All right. So obviously that's not pulled super tight or not simulating super tight pull, but it's, it'll give us a close enough approximation uh, estimating too much is better than not estimating enough, I guess, right? Uh, so, so, let's go back in there. I just want to make a plane uh, right at the end of that. And the deal, I can do a 2D sketch on that. It's going to be equal to the twine diameter. Okay. And we can hide these. And I want to do a sweep. Uh, so it's got two lines. We've got the profile and we've got the path. The profile is that uh, the circle we made. And the path is the sketch. And options, give me options. I don't want to merge this. All right. So that was kind of uh, kind of showing how it'll be uh, sewn together. Obviously, at the end, probably the bottom side I'll have a knot and at once I run all nine through and kind of have them tightened up I'll be putting uh, knots on the top as well but that this at least gives me a good idea because there's a this will be pulled tighter this is actually drawn about as tight as it would get but the inside will be pulled a lot tighter so if I just match the length of this when I cut my pieces, I'll know, or if I match the length of this, multiply it by nine, I know how much twine this thing's going to use. So how would I do that is the question. Let's get some stuff out of the way here. Let's do 3D sketch, and I'm just going to convert this whole thing. And you know what? I'm going to hide everything. And actually, at the moment, I forget if this is going to work or not, but I'll give it a shot. I think it's going to work. So basically, I just made this equal in length to that. And there we go. So 
about 813 millimeters times 9. So 7.3 meters, if that ain't too bad. hide that just keep that around for later so we're back to that got our piece of twine and might as well make a, uh, a pattern of that as long as we're at it just so everything looks right well, if something doesn't look like right we know it because we see it as opposed to finding out later all right so tops press fit, bottoms press fit. Might put a couple of drops of glue just for good measure, but they should be pretty well together. The sides are woven together. The uh, diffuser panels, they're woven in at the same time. The top just drops on and drops into the little recesses. Uh, so what's left is the feet, which again, depend on the bulb socket and then the bulb socket group which also depends on the bulb socket so until Amazon gets here this is as done as it's gonna get